Oh, and look, look, look. Starship Seer? Uh, weird marketing, but Shark Geek has, you know, we've done that little battery pack before. Call it the Shark Geek. It's Shark Geek. Don't say Shark Week. Shark Geek. I'm not saying Shark. See, you don't even know what I'm saying. I'm saying Shark. Is it Shark? Shark. Oh. Shark. Shark means don't trust your farts. Oh. And, well, they sent over some other stuff to check out. So, let's see what they got. So, I have tried this out. I brought it on the little camping trip. I want to see how it worked out. Haven't used the other parts yet. So, we'll just take all this out. Interesting little packaging that they've done here. Um, it's weird, I guess. So, this is a little... Well, yeah, it's little. Let's zoom in. A little retro charger. So it's saying it's 35 watts. USB-C. Um, interesting. It flips out. A little travel charger. Should charge most phones. I mean, this, probably some of the Samsung ones will charge faster than 35. But 35 is going to get you a pretty quick charge to begin with. Um, well, let's see if it charges their battery pack. So this is the little battery pack that has USB-C input and then USB-A out. I guess it's C in and out and then only A out, of course. So there's just one on the side of each right there. Looks like there's two, probably with those 18650 cells. I think that's the number on them. I don't think you can open this. Maybe that's what that SIM card tool is for. This is kind of weird. It's like a cable with... I'm not sure how much I'll use this. So, yeah, I got one of those um, weird USB-C 9 compliant backward connectors. Uh, I'm not sure what those are. <laughs> These are your regular USB-C's that most people know and find on their phones and other devices. So I guess that's like a converter. It's stuck in there. Yeah, so I guess you can convert your USB-C to this connector. If the thing will zoom in on it. So I probably won't be using this. I don't have a phone that has that connector. So let's just use their cable though. And I've got a plug here. Let's plug her in. No lights on it. I think. Help if I had the plug on. So it does light up this blue looking screen. I got it's kind of a bluish silver. So let's see what happens when we charge. So it says this is 35. Oh, look, it changes colors when it's charging. Let's turn the light out so you can see this better. Yeah, so it's, I guess it shows green. What that changes with the different types of charging. So this is only showing 27.9 watts input. Is that due to this isn't really 35? their own this will charge this will allow up to 100 watts input let's see what this will charge at so it is charging 35 watts on this is that little battery pack i covered before so looks like this thing only charges at 27 so we are getting the full 35 out of here look this only thing looks like it charges at 27 as being the max so nothing really more to that very Simple little pack with uh, the little USB-C converter. And I do think this is pretty cool. The little retro computer looking little charger here, which is pretty interesting. What we got here? Interesting, to say the least. Um, 
hard to see on camera, but there's a rocket ship <laughs> and uh, some warning labels. And um, yeah, we'll just see what we'll be using this one. Some people might USB-C to lightning. Don't need that. I'm just straight C around the house. These are really good quality. They're thick cables. The problem I ha might have, will it fit on my phone with the case? Oh, okay. They did think of that. And it passes just barely. But it does work. Now let's take all this crap out and see what we get. So there's this coily cable. USB-C. I guess you can stick it together and then screw it together. Interesting. And I just made the thing fall off. Which way does go on? I'd probably lose this. A uh, big black rubber piece. Is that for all your, shove all your cables in, I guess? I hope. Or some sort of bondage stuff? I don't know. So then there's this other cable. Is this one going to pop off too? Yep, it all pops off. So maybe that's supposed to pop off? I have no idea what that's really for. I don't get the, this is just, why you, you don't have time to dick around with cables and screwing stuff together. I guess it does lock together now. So you can make a really long cable. Okay. The springy cable, I guess you can do for the car very weird so definitely weird i don't know if i'm exactly i'm sure og will use this with all these various tablets and stuff and everything and um yeah yeah you'll find the link for more information if you like some squiggly thick very strong cables with some bulky yet strong looking connectors so Singled contacted me and asked if I wanted to check out some of their Zigbee stuff. And uh, yeah, of course. Singled always got some pretty cool stuff. It does work with ZHA, Zigbee to MQTT, and several other things out there in the Zigbee world as well. Now, they did include their little hubs. And yeah, this is an Ethernet one. I think it even does Wi-Fi. Um not going to be using these because I use Home Assistant, Zigbee to MQTT, etc. I guess this might be useful if you eventually want to connect your devices to this to check for a firmware upgrade or you know sometimes we'll sniff some of the packets to see if they're getting firmware upgrades so we can grab them ourselves in ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. So I'll kind of leave this in the box and uh, maybe use it one day if I'm looking for a firmware upgrade, but not today. So they got a plug. Now, of course, I'll get to all this. There's some contact sensors. Um, and they also sent over, I think these are only warm white. Is there bulbs? And of course, another stupid hub, which we're not gonna use. But if you just wanted to put Zigbee in the cloud, Zigbee's a local protocol, by the way. No flashing or anything. It's fully local. Just, it works in your home without the cloud. But if you wanna put it in the cloud, then you get their hub, which I just showed, and then you put your local protocol in the cloud. Yeah, that's weird. So one thing I will say about the single LED bulbs, I've used them before in the past and they work pretty great. They're pretty decent bulbs, but the one thing about their bulbs, which I wish they would not do, wish they would make it where you could turn it on and off, 
these bulbs will not route. If you're looking for a Zigbee device that's going to create a mesh and like a repeater, don't use the bulbs. I guess Singled thinks you're so stupid that you're just going to put them on a, a fan or something in your room and you're going to turn the lights on and off. Maybe it'd be great for that. But if you're going to put this in the lamp and it's a great way to have a mesh Zigbee, don't get Singled bulbs. So if you like that feature, I guess do get them. Now they're plugs. This is a plug with power monitoring and yes, you can fit two of them in a socket for the North American market you'll see on this one. Now this one does route. So you'll get power monitoring and you'll get routing. It's a decent little plug. They are a little pricey compared to some other stuff out there, but they do work pretty well. Um, the remote, I do like this pretty cool remote and you can do the buttons however you want to do them in, at least in Zigbee to MQTT, buttons are pretty easy to configure. I know ZHA is a little bit more difficult with buttons. You have to go grab the event, but this is a Decora meant to go on your wall. You can slide it over or, and it's got the little magnet, however you want to do it. But then the remote just pops off the wall and for controlling your lighting or whatever you want to do with them. The only problem is if someone takes and hides the remote and like that never happens, right? Yeah, <laughs> that would be my only qualm about this is, um, can we get something that has a, where it would beep? If I lost the remote, that would be pretty cool. They have some LED strips. It looks like it's going to be a warm white, maybe. Yeah, so I turned the brightness down just so you could see. I did put this on 4500K. It's exactly what they're trying to do is mix in the warm white with the cool white, but then it makes this blue looking thing. I did also see that this strip does not route as well. So, um, Probably not going to be a good recommendation for me on a Zigbee strip. I've definitely seen better. I've seen some ones out there that are true five channel. Very disappointing. I mean, since most of the time you are doing white on your LED strips, so they really need to have five channels. So that's not going to be a, something that I would use myself. So the door pins the contact sensors we want to call them they are pretty small looking sensors I can pop one out here pretty small looking little sensors and the batteries are not the batteries the magnets are pretty slim as well um, what kind of batteries do these take I'll remove the battery right now. But, you know, your typical little coin cell battery there. I see a bit of C on the package. CR1632 that goes in here. So, yeah, of course, these are batteries, so these aren't going to route. They're just going to do their thing and, you know, see if the window or door is open. No frills deal there. So they said this is a home assistant remote. Looks like it's been opened. I haven't opened it. Then there's like an M-Bridge. It even talks about, yeah, home assistant MQTT broker. Yeah, we like that. But see, I'm going to go, I'm going to stop right here. They had me at home assistant down here. But then step one, operate and pair with their stupid app. Why couldn't we just do this without an app? We already have Home Assistant. Why don't we just auto discovery into Home Assistant? That's a thing. Now this one's gonna be a fun one. I've played with it trying out a, uh, cause I was trying to troubleshoot a battery pack. And um, <laughs> this one's been fun. I've always wanted one of these. So there's a unit without the fingerprints on it. And they do have USB-C for charging. There's your power. 
And then there's your BNC connectors where the different test leads hook up to. And it even has a little, I would say a handle, I guess that's a stand for it. Um, nothing else really to it. So you turn it on. They had auto set, which is, it'll just click and go through and show all the cool stuff and you don't have to dig through menus and everything to go through and you can see right there we are getting our 60 volts and make sure i don't grab that over there that's hot 60 volts and 60 i'm sorry 120 volts at 60 hertz here there is a bunch of you can do all the other channels i'll dig into more of this with, I want to get in depth, maybe we'll do some PWM stuff to show with the difference of like ESP8266, ESP32, and some of the PWM stuff with those chips, we'll be able to dig into using this oscilloscope. Always wanted one, and yes, they FNIRSI, they did send this along for review, and I do appreciate them for... Um, reaching out and see if we wanted some tools to show on the channel and help us out in the ESP world, right? The company was GoSund, and I've covered these switches before, and they contacted me saying, oh, your link's wrong. Well, I'm not gonna hold do just change the link if I don't know what's inside the switch. Y'all could have changed the whole thing, and I'm not gonna have a link in an old video. Um, it doesn't say go sun on here anymore, but, um, let's open this up and see what's inside. So take the four torques out and what do we see? I do like this. They have a Wi-Fi antenna. That's the, it's like switch five, I guess. So they got the Wi-Fi antenna, which is separate. It should get good signal out of that. And let's take a closer look. We have a Beckon chip. We might see if Cloud Cutter works with this, but we might have to dump it using the pins here to see if we can get this module. But yeah, they've changed this significantly. The one thing I never really liked about these switches, especially, but I guess these were the first to, or some of the first I've messed with is how clicky they are. They are very loud. Definitely. I know some people don't like the sound, the kind of a hollowest thud or the, uh, the Martin Jerry's. I like them because they're kind of, they're much quieter, but these we'll see if we can do some cloud cutter stuff on this. And um, maybe we'll get a, profile up there and you can cut them without doing any opening or soldering or whatever it may be but yep they are not ESPs anymore Way back there. 